What's the word, YouTube? It's your boy, Big Will. I'm back with another episode of Life After Prison. Let me tell you. I had some personal things that I was uh, working through. But they're gone. They're not gone. They're just... They're bottled in. I still have problems dealing with adjusting to my anger, my depression, my anxiety. Some of the things that when you're locked up, I think you express them easier. Because there's really nothing to hold in, you know. Um, it's 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 almost like you don't show anxiety, it's weakness. You don't show depression because it's weakness. If you show emotions, people take it as weakness, and then it's trouble. The only emotion that you show is anger, and you tend to. Let your anger come out more than it should, you know? So, I'm still at the point that I'm still dealing with how to control my anger, right? Now, I haven't been here for a little bit, but it ain't been because I've been in trouble. Let's just say that's a good thing. Um, I keep my nose clean, right? I just don't need the uh, bullshit from the law. Life will not end, right? And life doesn't become peachy keen when you get out of jail, right? You just, you go through life, and it's like any other thing. Like when you have a habit, or you're an addict, you go through life, but you have an addict, right? And it's an, it's an added, it's an added, obstacle that you have to deal with but controlling emotions such as anger it, it, it gets hard it gets hard and I was doing all right for a long time I was doing all right um I yeah okay yeah okay yeah okay I talked a lot of things off you know Blew it off. Um, but there's only so much you can blow off, I believe. There's only so much you can put inside that bottle and put the cover on. Eventually, the bottle, the cap don't fit anymore and it overflows, right? So the best way to, I think, to deal with it is to Dump that shit right out. Deal with it daily. I think when you deal with it daily, it's easier to control your emotions, right? You, you don't over explode. You know? Um, you got a bottle of Coke when it's only got a little bit on the bottom and you shake it up. It fizzes, but it doesn't explode. But when you got a whole bottle and you shake that shit up, it explodes. You know what I mean? So you got to treat your life like the same way. It's like a Coke bottle. You know what I'm saying? And just shake that shit up when it's a little bit out of time. And this way you can deal with it. You can, you can, you can deal with it. You can control the explosion. It's how I feel. It's been working for me for years, and but lately I've had a lot of explosions, you know? Because it seems when I explode, it doesn't empty the bottle out. And then I put more on and I explode, and the bottle just keeps exploding and exploding. And every time I let a little bit out, I keep putting more in. And I'm not letting enough out 
to where when the anger comes, I can just deal with that little bit. I'm dealing with everything behind it. And it gets tough. It gets tough. I'm not the type to uh, look for counseling. Um, I don't believe me sitting and paying somebody <laughs> to listen to my problems is going to help. No, it's not. They're going to give me their take on it. They're going to give me their thoughts. They're going to give me their quick fix, <laughs> if that's what you want to call it. You know, they're not going to help me out. I've never been a fan of counseling. Um, when I used to be married, there was no marriage counselor coming in. I didn't like the ex-wife, and that was just the way it was, you know. Um, I liked her enough to have a child, and that kept me around not liking her longer than I should have, you know. But there was no counseling going to fix it. I'm going to go and tell a counselor how I really feel and what they're going to tell me some magic. Well, you need to do this, or you need to act like this, and it will change, and you'll feel much better. Don't give me that bullshit. People go to school to be a counselor or a psychologist. And they pay thousands of dollars so they can earn thousands of dollars to manipulate people's mind. I'm not that dude. Sorry. My mind is a lot smarter than my mouth, should I say? When shit comes in, I can analyze it more than I can explain it. If that makes any sense. So I don't need a counselor to say, I don't like A, B, and C. Well, maybe you should try D, E, and F. It's not going to work for me. But with that said, that was just a little intro of why I haven't made videos, but um, let me get back into it. But uh, somebody reached out to me on Instagram, a friend of mine, and he told me that what people really want to know and what he's heard, people have asked him, and people have asked me the same thing. How do you feel? When you're about to be released. How do you deal with it? What happens to all your stuff? What's your last day there like? Well, if you're being bailed out. <laughs> your last day there is short and quick. And uh, you're out the door. They call your name. Dupers, you bail out. Your bail's here. You don't care what happens to your stuff. The last time they called me for bail, I think I was held 10 days until they raised the loot to bail me out. And when they called me, it was unexpected. My family surprised me. They didn't tell me that they was uh, raising my bail. And they called me, Dupris, yo. I went to the desk. They said, your bail's here. I turned around. I looked at everybody. I said, Mom, I'm out. You can have all my shit. <laughs> you know? And I, I, I'm i the type that I know a lot of people. I have a lot of friends. Um, I have a lot of homeboys from my city. Right? So when I go, when I go away, I'm usually blessed with a sweatsuit and radio and sneakers um, until I buy my own, you know, and then I bless somebody else. But I get that all that. I get radio, sneakers, cosmetics, all that shit. So I'm comfortable until canteen starts kicking in. So when I was there and my bail came, I told my celly, pass my shit out. Um, it was a couple of 
guys that I was with, you know, daily for that 10 days, and they know what to do, who to pass it to. And it just, it goes right back into a, whatever you have goes right back into a, how, how do I want to say it, like a, like a fund, you know, for the next homeboy that comes in that don't have canteen and can't make canteen and shit like that. He gets blessed with sneakers and it's a little, it's a little care package that we pass out to people. And it's so you can get acclimated. Cause you know it sucks. It sucks when they, it sucks when, when you go to court and you walk in and you're thinking, yeah, you know, I'll see you at noontime. I got caught today. And that judge says, remanded to the state. It ain't fun. You're, 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 you feel like you got kicked in the balls. I'm telling you, it's just, it lets the wind and the air right out of you. It's like, oh, man. I had a case with a friend of mine. And, uh, we went on a high-speed chase. Shout out to Squeak. <laughs> we went on a high-speed chase. And when we went back to the police station, he had a... Um, he had a warrant, so he had no bail. I didn't. I was able to get bailed out. So, they held him over the weekend. Monday comes, he goes to court. I'm sitting in the, now we're co-defendants, but we're sitting there and he gets detained. Right away, my mind starts going. And as I'm getting up and I'm heading for the doors, I hear him calling my name. Over Dobris, there ain't no turning around. See you later. And my co-defendant's just watching me. He's just watching me hit the doors. And he knew what I was doing. I was out. I wasn't being detained that day. I wasn't being detained. So I went on a run and you know, 12 days later I had the Fugitive Task Force and the state police. Um, they surrounded my grandmother's house. That was the address that I had. They surrounded my mother's house. They knew I lived there, and they surrounded my girl's house at the time. My ex-girl, my kid's mother. And, um, I hid in the closet. And I watched the cops come in and search the house, and I, sit, I hid in the closet, and I put, like, clothes on me. And I tucked myself into the closet, and I seen the flashlight come by. And the cop left. And I was like, wow. And then all of a sudden, the next cop comes in. He's like, anybody check this closet? And you heard a cop say, yeah, I did. And he's like, I'll check it again. And as he put this flashlight, it comes across my face. And, you know, you have hands, hands. Show me your hands. Show me your hands. I'll fucking shoot. Show me your hands. And, you know, right away, your hands come out. And they handcuff you. And they take you in, you know. And because it was the fault, now there's no bail. And see you later. So that ride, you automatically know you're gone, right? You're not, you're not coming home when you go to court. The bail is another way. But when you're in there and you do a bid, and it's your time to come home, the anxiety and the pressure, and you try to act so calm and so happy, but inside, you're scared. You're truly scared. Because you don't want to come out and come back tomorrow. There's so many people that I know that have gotten released. And if you don't have any family to pick you up, you don't have any money, they'll give you a ride to the mall. It's not a setup, is it? You don't have nothing. You're getting released from jail. They'll give you a ride or a bus ticket to the mall. And if you're a criminal, what are you going to do? You're going to look to get money. You're going to look for transportation to get home. 
So you look to start breaking into cars or stealing clothes or something from the mall for an outfit. And so many people I know have left and gone right back. Been out 24 hours and come right back. Been out less than 24 hours and got right back. I remember the time I was out. I had did two and a half years. And I was in for driving on a license. And when I came out. I just wanted to drive. And I told my kid's mother, come on, let's go. We're going to go to the market. I want to, I want to eat some real foods. I'm going to drive. And I pulled up to a stop sign. And I stopped, but I didn't completely stop. And I just rolled through it. And as I did, when I glanced to the right, I seen the cop. And my inside just dropped. And when them lights went on, I knew I had no license. I just did two and a half years with driving on a license, driving on a suspended license. Um, habitual offender. I, <laughs> the cop came over and he looked, he said, license and registration. And I looked at him and I said, I don't have one. I just got out today and I just needed to drive. I needed to be behind the wheel. And he looked at me and he said, Are you fucking stupid? What's wrong with you? Get out of the car and let her drive. I got a good mind to take your ass back. But he didn't. And I was grateful. And I went home and I drove again the next day. But when you're leaving and it's your day, everything you have, you leave for other people. You leave behind. Um, you leave for other people. You leave it for in case you come back. You leave it for your friend that you know from the streets. When he comes in, he doesn't have anything. You leave it for someone that you don't even know that comes in and don't have anything. So everything you have, you leave. It's an omen. They tell you. Do not take anything back from prison. Your ID or any clothes. Because if you take it home with you, you'll wear it back. Someone once told me one time when I went in, I called my name and they said, Don't call your name. What's wrong with you? And I was like, why? Well, everyone's name's here in the cell. And they said, it's an omen. You carve your name, you'll be back to see it. I ain't coming back, not me. Six months later, I was back seeing it again. But that day, when you when it's your time to come, and you're up, you can't you you don't know what to do with yourself. You get up. You usually release about nine, between nine and ten in the morning. When your people show up to pick you up, if you got nobody to come and pick you up, they'll let you leave right after lunch. After the court transport to come back, the van will come back and they'll drop you off to the local store or they'll hand you a bus pass and send you on your way. But um, they don't let you walk off the ground, it's illegal. I've heard it's illegal, I'm not sure actually. But I've heard that it's illegal to let somebody walk off the prison jail, the compound. Um, your people have to come in. They have to check in and let them know that you're here for so-and-so. They will call you down. You will go down and change. Even though you've been released, even though it's your days out and you served your time, until you actually walk out that door, you're... Uh, Prisoner of the state, yeah, property of the state. So you go down and change, and they put you in a holding tank, and you're like, listen, I just want to get out of here. Wait, you got to sign some papers. I'm all done with my time. I just want to get out of here. Yeah, we got papers coming, and we got this, and, blah, 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 and you know, you got to get your property. And listen, I don't want nothing from here. You know what I mean? Just give me my shit that I left in the safe, my wallet, my ID, shit like that. And they walk you out, and... You walk out to the sally port, and there's one door, 
and there's the next door and you'll walk through the yard with your clothes or your mattress and you got to bring your shit down in the dispatch and you drop off your shit whatever else you don't leave behind a fan a radio sweats sneakers you leave all that shit cosmetics that you have you leave all that shit any food you have left usually when you know it's your last week you don't buy canteen so you just you basically eat everything you have for the last week you don't you don't save no food to leave behind unless you get bailed out unless you go to court and you have canteen and they say we're releasing you but other than that you give everything away they open up the gates you meet your people you hug your family and it feels tremendous it's a feeling like no other to walk out of that gate and be free and it's crazy because you'll be out in the yard and you'll be you know you but it's almost like when you step out of the gate it's like the air is different the air is different yeah it's fresh air it's not that prison air inside the walls it's no fun when you're sitting in a prison yard and you're, you're looking at fences and barbed wires and walls and a god sitting up in a tower or a god walking around the yard making sure that nobody's conspiring or doing certain stupid shit but yeah it's 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 a, it's a feeling like no other this video is getting long so i'm gonna end it there but hope that answers a few questions if you have any other questions leave them in the comments below and like i said i'll be back at you see you on the flip side it's your boy big will life after prison hey hit that like and subscribe button We'll be back, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.